Hi, welcome back. I'm Julie from Crafts and Coffee, and this is my new fall video. I just wanted to apologize really quick. The audio is not very good. I sound very monotone. I was trying to do the voiceover while everyone was sleeping, and I could not have the confidence to be full level because I was afraid of waking everyone up. So, um, please forgive me, and I will never do that again. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. So for this first project, I am using this scrapbook paper from Michaels, and I just made a simple design on Cricut, and I used the pen feature to draw it out. I have a Cricut Maker, so I am just using the pens. I'm not sure if the other ones do that. And now I am cutting it to fit the inside of one of those mini crates from Dollar Tree. Next, I am using Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson to fill in the sign. So here I have two different sizes of the crates from Dollar Tree. And what inspired me for this project was actually a few years back, if you guys don't remember, they there was like a huge trend of making coffee tables out of like rustic crates. And I thought, oh, I'll just make a mini version of that. So that's kind of what inspired me for this project. So here I'm just hot gluing them all together. Then I am taking some Minwax wood stain in the color Early American and I am staining the entire piece. If I had to redo this project or if I was doing this project again, I would highly recommend to stain first before you glue it together because getting in that center part is a pain in the behind. So yeah. Next I am taking Waverly chalk paint in the color white and I am dry brushing the edges. I'm actually dry brushing each individual piece so that they look like separate crates. Again, I would do this part also before I glued it together had I have thought of that before I started making it. <laughs> Next, I am giving it a nice sanding before I add my finishing touches. Here I'm just weeding another crate stamp that I created. Um, I was kind of on a crate stamp kick after that first one that I made in the last video that I posted last week. And if you haven't seen that, I will link it in the description box below. But uh, I created a new one. This one was more inspired by the apple crates at, you know, the apple orchards. So um, I just made one of my own and I put it on here using some stencil vinyl that I purchased off of Amazon and it was actually extremely inexpensive and it's very nice. It worked. Um, it might be my new best friend. So I used that. Then I used the same, I actually used the same stencil on both sides. So that's why on the second one it looks like this and which I actually kind of liked because it gave it more of a authentic feel to it in my opinion. Then I finish that off with a nice good sanding to give it more of a distressed, worn look. And I'm back to my apple sign, which I am just sizing, and then I hot glue it into place. Next, I'm taking these Dollar Tree apples, one of which my son thought was real and started to chew on, and... I am adding some other finishing touches, all from Dollar Tree, super cute, just to give it a little decor. <music> 
and as the final final touch a twine bow to go on the corner So I have these two foam pumpkins that I actually bought for this project and I used the embellishments at the top to on another project. I think actually I posted that video already. But um so I'm just taking these and I'm painting one with Waverly chalk paint in the color white and the other one I'm going to paint in the Waverly moss colored chalk paint. Here I'm using the stencil brushes from Dollar Tree. It comes in, I think, a three pack, but this is the smaller brush. And I'm just painting little circles on the white pumpkin. And because it's a uneven surface, I had to kind of finish off the circles with just a regular paintbrush, which actually wasn't as difficult as it seems. On the moss pumpkin, I took some jute string and just used my hot glue gun to keep everything in place. And I used the jute string to accent all the details of the pumpkin. Next, I am taking this ribbon from Dollar Tree that's kind of like a burlap with some gold accents on the side. It's super duper cute. Like all the ribbons they've been coming out with this year have been absolutely adorable. So I am using this uh, to kind of give the pumpkins a little more something. So these are going to mimic where the leaves would normally go. And I'm going to do this to both pumpkins. Next, I am taking a Dollar Tree pie pan and this, I think it's called mesh rope, but they had this burlap looking one, which is really cool. So I originally was going to put uh, raffia all the way around and it was a pain in the booty. Like, I don't even know how people are using raffia. It's, I have not figured out the technique. So I you know, went to this instead and it worked pretty well. I actually purchased this rope with no intentions of using it. I had, I kind of thought it looked really awesome and it would come in handy, which it did in this case, but I had no idea what I was going to use with it. So cool. The cool thing is you can pull it on the end and it will go flat. So then you can kind of just make it flow. I also have a cake pan from Dollar Tree that I also added that rope to. Here I am gluing the pumpkins to the center of that pan. Finally, I am hot gluing them all together and voila! Okay, I saved the best for last. This is fantastic. So watch. Anyways, so I decided to use one of these mini wreath forms and make another mini wreath for my DIY window shutter. I will link the video below if you haven't seen that. Check it out. And I found uh, a nice use for this raffia. So I just kind of weaved it between the wires 
and it just had such a beautiful pattern so I decided to go a little more and I had this idea just to go halfway so I decided to do that and it looked super cool. Next, I took this super farmhousey ribbon again from Dollar Tree in their super cute collection, and I did the same thing. I weaved it in between the wires, and I just thought it looked so amazing. I just kept going, and I did the other half with that. And in my opinion, it's pretty stinking cute. So I just made sure to pinch it a little bit or kind of press it together just to make sure that the wires were not showing or were showing as little as possible because I definitely did not want the wires to show through. Next, I secured it with hot glue and look how cute it is my goodness then i had this lamb's ear from walmart and i just took two pieces i just took the little sprigs right off and i hot glued them at the bottom as you can see i kind of overlapped the ribbon it wasn't quite halfway with the raffia but when you cover it with floral or something it doesn't show so it's perfect then i took these what are they called? Foxtails? No. I forget what this plant is called, but I used those as embellishments along with some of these cute teeny tiny little white flowers that they have in their fall collection. And it was super, this was super quick, super fast, and it is so cute. I love it. So thank you again to every single person who is watching this right now. You are awesome. Thank you for putting up with my nighttime voice. And I hope that you will like this video and subscribe so you can see all of my future uploads. And a special thank you to Lindsay Ryan and Michelle Norman. You guys are awesome. Thank you. Bye.